this is just another one of my uh, series of guest videos. This one is, a, is of a Granite Series 646 power line disturbance analyzer. Uh, circa, built circa 1987. Got this uh, some years back. Tested it and it started smoking after a little bit. So I um, stopped using it and it's been spent the better part of a decade languishing under my bed until I just finally found the thing and decided to just uh, do a guest video of it. Uh, this is the power supply section of it. Uh, this one uses a linear supply unlike the um, model 626 which I already did a gets video of. This little uh, 40 VA or 50 VA judging by the size uh, transformer. Then mounted that little bit of uh, aluminum L bracket or a bunch of uh, linear potential regulators. This one uh, on the, in the uh, center of the frame is an LM337. That is a variable negative potential rec uh, regulator. That one is for the negative 15 volt supply for the analog stuff on this board because this is all pretty much discrete um, analog and TTL and stuff. This the design logic of it is uh, circuitry. Then there's an LM340 or 7805. There are two different part numbers for the same device. That's 5 volt for the um, TTL and the processor and everything. Then buried down there where they're kind of hard to see, but there's an LM317 that's with positive 15 volt analog supply and a couple of other devices, the part numbers of which I can't read. And there's miscellaneous passives and filtering capacitors and inductors and whatnot for other bits of the power supply section. There's a little uh, panel mount IEC receptacle. I see plug. That is uh, with a little built-in uh, EMI RFI filter. It's been fairly standard stuff. Little um, potential selection switch for the transformer. Started in all this funky gunji from, um, I guess, outgassing of the various nickel cadmium cells and battery in its devices that were dying. Because the thing is about a quarter century old, and the master on-off switch. And down in there is the printer, same little thermal printer mechanism that the Model 626 had, except this one uses a little micro switch. Kind of hard to see down in there, but um, this switch is, uh, detects whether or not there's paper in the device. Um, and that's just one little thing different about it from the uh, Model 626, which had, Model 626, which had an infrared uh, photo um, phototransistor and LED set. And there's a little uh, drive motor for the uh, paper feed. There's a little stepper motor down there. The um, tip one of 125 power transistors that are most likely for driving it. Some various drive stuff. It's a mixture of uh, some uh, TTL. Those two chips are TTL. And these four are UCN 5801s. Those are the latch drivers. There's a little uh, signal transformer down there. There's um, a CD4047, that is a um, uh, CMOS logic, some uh, pull-down resistor networks, or the pull-downs or pull-ups, one of the two. Some, um, that's uh, more TTL, that is a little uh, resistor network chip, and these are just the two uh, flux cables that uh, go off to the front uh, panel membrane switch, or membrane keypad and display LCD. That's just got a little, uh, nothing fancy, it's just a little uh, HD 44780 uh, liquid crystal display driver. Nothing fancy. And on the main processor board, there's a, um, the main processor, it's a Hitachi HD 63B03. Um, Below that is an NMC 9306, that is 256-bit um, E-squared PROM, probably for configuration settings or something, because it's only about, uh, it's 
32 yeah 32 bytes which is not much and this TL Joe at one operational amplifier below that and a little uh, piezo buzzer then these two uh, shiny top chips they're just standard black uh, P dips but they've got this little uh, silver paint on top of them to make the part number more legible those are Texas Instruments uh, MC1488 and an MC1489. Those are uh, RS232 drivers, some uh, serial line uh, protection fuses, and some 74HC02s, or TTL. Then there are these three very dead nickel cadmium cells. Crystal for the uh, processor, more TTL. Yeah, pretty much. Except that's that CMOS, but pretty much it's all discrete logic chips. Except for these, which is the um, CDP6818, that's a uh, real-time clock with built-in RAM. A um, HM6264, that's SRAM. And these two uh, EPROM, and these two EPROMs, which are um, most likely device firmware. Then down here, this is a, uh, another one of the boards. This one, uh, it only takes this set of five cards, and they're not really supposed to be changed except for like the like replacement. So they do not have the um, configuration EPROMs that tell the device at the um, uh, during the uh, power on test what it does. Because the model six two six has a whole range of different cards you can put in, and uh, as a consequence, each one needs a little configuration EPROM on it to tell what the card is. This one just takes this set of five cards, so it doesn't have that. This one is a mixture of um, comms for the uh, built-in modem. It's the same model modem that the, um, it's a DMB12, same model modem that the uh, 626 has, except this one is um, an earlier version. This is from, I think, 1983 or 1984. Again, at least 24 1984. This is a 1984 version, so it's a few years earlier. And what the, the main difference between the two is that this has this big black opto-isolator. This one just has a standard uh, DIP6 package opto-isolator. That is a um, LCA110. Other than that, they're virtually identical. And it's like even down to the artwork, because uh, looking at the bottom, there's some, you can see how the artwork has been changed between the two modems to fit the different uh, design uh, optos. But other than that, they're virtually identical. And of course, this also confirms one suspicion I had during the teardown of the 626, because this one has the, an MC54C221, that is a military uh, specification TTL device, which is pin each uh, device in the 54 series is pin compatible with the 74 series, uh, same device, part number. So, most likely that's just because. It's what I suspected. They ran out of the 7.4 variants, but happened to have some of these in stock, so they just used it. Because there's no, it doesn't do any problems uh, substituting a higher specification device normally. Other than that, they're virtually identical. Same uh, um, signal transformer, caps, uh, passives. Um, pretty much, other than those two different di differences, the, dev the boards are identical. Same little TMS 99532. Um, FSK modem in both of them. Then getting down to the main board, there are this device with the gold cavity lid, the MN574AR, that is an 11 bit analog digital converter, and uh, above it, the MP7524 8 bit uh, digital analog converter. That's all just uh, most likely stuff to do with the um, built in. Uh, um, temperature sensor because this does have an optional temperature sensor which connects to this little uh, three pin receptacle on the board and then other than that and some TTL right there and a little uh, one million ohm resistor network right there the boards are virtually identical or no all the, all the other stuff on the board is for analog there's some TL 0 XX series operational amplifiers and these devices, DG508HJ, um, 
analog multiplexers and the DG201 ACJ analog switches. <laughs> then for the um, input boards, first off, there's what was smoking. It was this um, tantalum capacitor. And looking at the underside of the um, cover that normally goes over this, because this is fits this R at mains potential. Yeah, I think there was a problem there. But anyways, so that this particular board has three different uh, portions of it. There's the DC monitoring side. This is most likely master supply bus or something, because. Uh, I didn't have anything connected up to this board when it smoked. There's the DC, which can measure any um, DC supply from 0 volts to 100 volts. There's a little, what I think is neutral ground potential variance, or, pot or um, measuring potential differences between the two. And then there's a 0 volt to 600 volt AC um, potential measurement side. Um, uh, it's got capacitors, some trim pots, and these um, for the AC side, and for the same thing for the um, free phase AC card. It's got a bunch of these little uh, precision uh, resistance networks, which are most likely custom because they have a drainage format part number 104746-B, week 9 of 1987, KDI, which is most likely the manufacturing code. And then it's just a more uh, TL0XX series. Um, operational amplifiers and passes and some uh, transistors. This one, the board, which is virtually identical aside from all the channels have the uh, precision resistor networks. These also have the um, uh, footprint for them, but for the uh, neutral, neutral ground uh, potential discrepancy portion and the DC um, bus portion, they didn't put them in. And also this one has this kind of a dip jumper thing mounted in this uh, socket, whereas this one it has it mounted in this socket. So that's most likely for, they could be easily set up as one or the other. Then there's the um, uh, analog digital conversion board, which both things connect to with this uh, series of 100 mil headers on the top. They connect up with this little um, uh, interconnect board. There's a couple uh, TL082 uh, operational amplifiers, some uh, Harris uh, HA149055 uh, precision uh, comparators, and everything else is TTL or CMOS discrete logic. So this is what uh, Takes the analog signal in, most likely there's one of these per channel. Take it, reference it, or compare it to whatever. And then all this is just uh, various processing logic. And uh, when you consider that nowadays this would all be one FPGA and probably a couple ADCs. So it's interesting to see how things have changed in the quarter century. But hopefully I'll be able to get this thing working, although it'll require a great deal of extensive cleaning because there's a great deal of corrosion on the board from the various cells cooking off, like there's all this uh, blue schmutz on the uh, processor socket, some corrosion of the uh, some of the vias in the board, and of course this um, uh, header, which is all very nasty, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's all covered in blue crap from probably bits of components of the electrolyte corroding the um, beryllium copper contacts in the uh, thing. So, yeah.